Amnesty International is calling it a horrific tragedy. Scores and possibly hundreds of civilians have been stabbed and hacked to death in the northern Ethiopian region of Tigray. Witnesses say local forces fighting government troops in the region are to blame for the killings in May Kadera. But they so far deny carrying out the attacks. The victims are thought to be day labourers not involved in the conflict. Hostilities flared last week after the government accused the Tigray People's Liberation Front of attacking a government military camp. The UN is warning of a humanitarian crisis as thousands flee to neighbouring Sudan. As we report, the stability of the whole region is feared to be at stake. This is a country sliding into civil war. These Ethiopians have come not to enjoy themselves, but to give blood for their soldiers fighting in Tigray state. The main aim of uh, the blood donation program is to express uh, our affection, our respect for our army. The conflict is not with the Tigray, we, not with the Tigray people, not with the Tigray region. It's rather with the Hoas Junta group who have uh, attacked our army in a shameful uh, way. The conflict erupted in early November. The government sent troops into the region after an alleged attack by local forces on a federal army base in Tigray's capital. The federal government had every right to deploy federal security forces and use force in order to apprehend those implicated in massive corruption and gross human rights violation. Relations between the Ethiopian Prime Minister and the Tigray People's Liberation Front have long been tense. For nearly 30 years, the TPLF was dominant in Ethiopian politics. But Abiy curbed the party's influence after coming to power in 2018. Its leaders say they have been unfairly targeted. A constitutional dispute raised tensions to boiling point. The TPLF defied Abiy's decision to postpone national polls due to the coronavirus pandemic. In September, they went ahead with elections in Tigray, which they control. Not only the stability of Ethiopia is at stake in this conflict. The country, with its population of 110 million, is pivotal to the stability of the Horn of Africa as a whole. In 2019, Abiy won a Nobel Peace Prize for his sweeping political reforms and his role in brokering peace with Eritrea after a bloody border war. But so far, he's failed to heed the calls of the UN and the African Union for a ceasefire in the conflict. Well, for more on this story, let's bring in Sam Dabali. He's uh, with Amnesty International's crisis response team and joins us uh, from Berlin. Sam, Amnesty uh, brought the news about Tigray, uh, the Tigray massacre to the world. Getting information on the region is hard with phone lines and the internet down. How do you access and verify your information? Yeah, so uh, very nice to be with you today. Um, we we first became aware of of this uh, massacre in Mikadra, in south in the southwest zone of, of Tigray region, um, uh, two days ago. Um, we started looking into images and eventually videos that started appearing on social media, and took this very seriously. Um, as you rightly say, it's it's been very hard to communicate with the region. So any information that has been coming out of the region needs to be very carefully and very thoroughly checked. Um, we spent. Uh, a good amount of time um, going through these videos, going through these vo photographs, making sure that they were they were taken, captured recently, making sure that they weren't from previous events um, from from the region, um, to to really um, you know verify and, and to make sure we we know what to, what had happened in Mikadra, and we coupled that with with interviews of witnesses and people who'd spoken to eyewitnesses uh, from the Mikadra region. So we're very confident when we're saying that uh, several hundred civilians were stabbed or hacked to death um, in, in Mikadra. Who, who did this? We're, we're unsure, although people have told us that um, it's members of the Tigray People's Liberation Front, although we cannot independently confirm that. Mm. Sam, your organization has also urged the Ethiopian government to restore communications and allow monitors to access the regions. Are they actually responding? 
Uh, so far, not. Uh, but uh, we're obviously always open to to, to communication. Um, we're we're very keen, and we really do implore the authorities to restore all communication to Tigray. Uh, this is essential to to ensure accountability and transparency for all operations on both sides of this of this conflict, all the military operations in the region, uh, and also very key to ensuring that people can can communicate with other in accordance with their right to freedom of expression. But monitoring this situation is, is very important. Um, um, as you as you said in your report, as you said in your introduction, there are a thousand, several thousand refugees crossing the border into Sudan. Uh, it's very key that the uh, Ethiopian authorities uh, ensure that on all sides that uh, international humanitarian law and international human rights law is respected throughout this conflict. Talking about that, what what is most urgently needed to support the many civilians now affected by this conflict? Um, I think it's, it's key that uh, the international community really presses Ethiopia to investigate n not only what's happened in Mikadra uh, on the 9th of November, on the 10th of November, but also that uh, the international community presses Ethiopia to ensure um, all sides of the conflict pr protect civilians. Uh, there'll be urgent need for assistance also over the border in Sudan, which uh, I think the international community uh, has to step up and, and make sure that the, the civilians crossing into Sudan are provided for. Uh, but really, I think uh, the, where the where the international community must intervene is really to press Ethiopia, the Ethiopian authorities, to investigate what's gone on and to ensure that uh, international humanitarian law and international human rights law is respected throughout. Sam Dubbly from Amnesty International's Crisis Response Team, thanks for joining us here on DW News. Thank you. Well, let's go uh, live to the Ethiopian capital, Addis Ababa, where journalist Samuel Gatichu is uh, standing by. Uh, Samuel, the UN is now calling for a full uh, uh, inquiry into possible war crimes. What has been uh, confirmed so far? What has been confirmed is that people are indeed uh, dying in Tigray uh, with little attention given by us because we can't even go and uh, report from uh, the site. Um, and Ethiopians are happy that the UN and even Amnesty International is coming abroad uh, and uh, telling us exactly what we've been hearing for a long, long time. Um, and the UN uh, Human Rights Commissioner is no stranger to Ethiopia, having been, she's from Chile, grew up in the Pinochet era, and she knows exactly what war crimes looks like. And this is what looks like to us. Samuel, there, there, there well. are also reports that Ethiopian police gave the order of identifying ethnic Tigrayans from all government uh, agencies and NGOs. Does that mean that this is turning into an ethnic conflict? That hasn't been confirmed uh, so far. We've heard uh, rumors. Uh, we're checking. Um, I know Reuters did report on it, uh, and the government is denying that's that's what's happening. But we have to check. We have to make sure that that's exactly what's happening. But we also have to know this ethnic uh, conflicts in Ethiopia is nothing new. Um, you know, uh, minorities have been attacked in the last... Uh, uh, since uh, a year ago, and uh, even Amnesty International. This is a second report that it released within the month of November, uh, saying that uh, minorities are being attacked, not just in Tigray, but in many, many regions all across the country. It, this looks like uh, at ethnic uh, warfare from, 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 mm. from what I see and what I hear within, uh, living in Ethiopia. Uh, many civilians in the area are already relying on, on aid. How badly could they be effect, affected by this? Well, you have to know that uh, the Tigray region hosts uh, refugees from Eritrea. Um, the, the, the state is aid dependent. Uh, it's an area where you can't even farm because it's, you know, it's, it's a land that can't be farmed. So it relies on aid for many, many of uh, a good percentage of its its population. So we can only uh, speculate uh, in terms of uh, the kinds of people that are being affected. Even transportation, taking food from other parts of Ethiopia and going to Tigray, it's not allowed. So I'm sure people are suffering and famine is closer mm -hmm. to a reality. This is an area where it suffered because of famine some 30 years ago, and this is like relieving uh, what Ethiopia experienced a long time ago. Is there also a risk, you think, that since this is turning into an ethnic uh, kind of conflict, that other countries will be drawn into it? 
Well, um, as I've been saying, uh, Ethiopia is an important nation within the region. So what happens in Ethiopia is certainly uh, going to spill over to uh, neighboring countries, uh, South Sudan being one of them, uh, a country that has only known war since the day it got its, its, its independence some uh, nine years ago in Sudan. Uh, so what happens in Ethiopia, um, as much as what happens in Sudan, uh, spills over to uh, both countries. So this isn't just an Ethiopian problem. It might even extend to uh, Europe uh, with all these migrants uh, heading to European nations. So it's going to be a huge disaster, not just for the African continent, but for the world. And that's why it needs to be taken really seriously. Samuel Getachew in Addis Ababa, thank you very much for your input. Thank you. Thank you.